So, we are discussing uh, the problems on uh, statistical thermodynamics. So, the problem number 6 is consider two moles of of a monoatomic ideal gas at 10 bar pressure and a temperature of 300 Kelvin in an isolated system. While remaining isolated, the gas is the gas is expanded into a vacuum from a volume of V1 equals to 1 liter to V2 equals to 10 liter. Calculate delta S and Q reversible for the process. And we need to use use statistical mechanical concept only. So, we are not allowed to use thermodynamic thermodynamical equation here, we need to consider statistical mechanical concept here. And this problem is based on secuted drawed equation that we discussed. So, from secuted drawed equation, We know S is N K B So, circuited equation from circuited equation we know the expression of entropy S is n times k b, n is the number of particles, k b is the Boltzmann constant and then you have logarithm of twice pi m k b t by h, h to the 2 to the 3 by 2 v by n and e to the 5 by 2. And the information provided here are like temperature is 300 Kelvin and number of particles here is 2 times Avogadro number because there in the problem it is saying that we have to consider 2 moles. So, what is delta S? So, delta S is twice N A K B L N V 2 Y V 1. Since other terms are constant, so we can clearly write change in entropy is 2 times N A times K V logarithm of V 2 by V 1 and if we solve this one we get 2 times R ln V 2 by V 1 and we get delta S is 9.21 and we get the value of delta S. So, delta S here is 
9.21 calorie per Kelvin. Once we get delta S, we can easily calculate Q reversible because Q reversible time Q reversible by T gives us delta S and temperature is given 300 Kelvin. So, Q reversible is 2.76 kilocalorie. So, this is very simple problem, but it uses, but it uses the circuit dot equation. Okay. Next, we will discuss another uh, interesting problem. The problem says the partition function. for Einstein's proposed model for atomic crystal can be written as Q is e to the minus beta u naught e to the minus beta h nu by 2 by 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu. Where nu is the frequency with which the atoms vibrate about their lattice positions and u naught which is independent of temperature is the, uh, is the sublimation sublimation energy at 0 degree 0 Kelvin temperature or the energy needed to separate all atoms from one another at 0 K temperature. Calculate the molar heat capacity of an atomic crystal from this partition function. So, this problem is little bit lengthy but it is very simple problem. It says the partition function for Einstein's proposed model for atomic crystals can be written as Q is e to the minus beta u naught e to the minus beta h nu by 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu, where nu is the frequency with which the atoms vibrate 
about their lattice positions and U naught which is independent of temperature is the sublimation energy at 0 Kelvin temperature or the energy needed to separate all atoms from uh, one another at 0 Kelvin temperature. Calculate the molar heat capacity of an atomic crystal from this partition function. So, partition function is given when we need to calculate heat capacity. So, next, next thing we need to do is we need to calculate average energy. Once we get the average energy from the partition function expression, we can easily calculate heat capacity. So, uh, we will use uh, this partition function to calculate the average energy. So, the partition function Q is e to the minus beta h nu beta u nu sorry e to the minus beta nu beta u naught e to the minus beta h nu by 2 by 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu. So, what do you do actually? We will use uh, mm, for the partition function expression you consider uh, e to the uh, partition function expression is now little bit modified. So, you we use q is e to the minus beta u naught e to the minus beta h nu by 2 uh, by e to 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu and the whole thing is, is powered by n. So, this is the partition function expression. So, l and q now we have to consider molar heat capacity. So, heat capacity, molar heat capacity we need to calculate. Molar heat capacity. So, molar heat capacity means we have to consider n is number of uh, is n a here. So, we get q, we have q. So, we can take logarithm of q both sides we get Now, what in we got L and Q the expression for L and Q. Now, what we need to do? We need to differentiate Q with respect to beta at constant n and v. So, the first term is independent of temperature, but differentiating with respect to temperature. So, the first term gives us 0, second term also gives uh, uh, second term gives us n h nu by 2. Now, the third term we have n ln 1 minus e to the beta b to the minus beta h nu. So, if we differentiate uh, this with respect to beta, we get And del L n q by del beta is nothing but minus of E average So, we get E average is n h nu by 2 minus n h nu by e to the plus e to the uh, h nu by k b t minus 1. So, this is the expression for average energy. So, we have got the expression for average energy. Now, we can calculate molar heat capacity by considering n equals to n a. So, the expression for energy we have now is E is n h nu by 2 plus 
n h nu by e to the h nu by k v t minus 1. So, C v is del e average by del t at constant volume. So, it gives us the first term gives us 0 and the second term if we differentiate we get So, if we differentiate the, it, uh, the expression of E, we get first term gives us 0 and the second term if we differentiate we get n h nu by e to the h nu by k b t to the 2 times minus 1 times e to the h nu by k b t and times minus h nu by k b t to the 2. So, you get C v is n h nu by k b to the 2 times t e to the h nu by k b t by e to the h nu by k b t minus 1 to the now, the molar heat capacity molar heat capacity it means n equals to n a is I it C V is n a times k b Or molar heat capacity C V bar is N A times K V gives us R. So, R H nu by K V T to the 2 E to the H nu by K V T by E to the H nu by K V T minus 1 to the 2. So, this is the expression for molar heat capacity. This is straightforward. This was a, this was a very straightforward problem, but uh, uh, one really has to work out. Now the third one we'll discuss. For problem number eight is the average kinetic energy. k b t by 2 of hydrogen gas or hydrogen atoms in a stellar gas is 1 electron volt what is the ratio of the number of hydrogen atoms in the second excited state to the number in the ground state the energy levels
of the hydrogen atoms R epsilon n is minus alpha n to the 2, where alpha is alpha equals to 13.6 electron volt and the degeneracy of the nth level is 2n to the 2. So, this problem states the average kinetic energy means 3 kVT by 2 of hydrogen atoms in a stellar gas is 1 electron volt. What is the ratio of the number of hydrogen atoms in the second excited state to the number in the ground state means n equals to 1 state? The energy levels of the hydrogen atoms are epsilon n equals to minus alpha by n to the 2 where alpha is 13.6 electron volt and the degeneracy of the nth level is 2 n to the 2. Now, uh, the, the information provided here are for ground state means n equals to 1, the value of energy is minus 13.6 by 1 to the 2 electron volt gives you minus 13.6 electron volt. And degeneracy of ground energy level we say this is G 1 is 2 times 1 to the 2. So, this gives us 2. Now, for second excited state, so for second excited state n is 3 not 2 remember that because we have the ground state then first excited state then second excited state and the ground state we are saying n equals to 1. So, the for second excited state n equals to 3, the energy value epsilon 3 is minus 13.6 by 3 to the 2 electron volt or minus 13.6 by 9 electron volt. And the degeneracy of second excited state we say this is G 3. So, this is nothing but 2 times 3 to the 2, so this gives us 18. And what we need to calculate? We need to calculate the ratio of number of hydrogen atoms in the second excited state to the number in the ground excited state. So, we need to calculate, we need to calculate what is the value of N 3 by N 1, where N 3 is the number of hydrogen atoms in the second excited state and N 1 is the number of hydrogen atoms in the ground energy level. Now, from Boltzmann distribution we know N 3 by N 1 is G 3 by G 1 times E to the minus beta epsilon 3 minus epsilon 1. So, N 3 by N 1 is G 3 is 18, G 1 is 2 times E to the minus epsilon 3 is 13.6 by 9. and we have the minus sign here and then we have this is 13.6 times beta. So, we have N 3 by N 1 is 9 times E to the 13.6 times 9 minus 13.6 
13.6 by 9 this is in electron volt times beta is 1 by k b t. Now, it is given that 3 by 2 k b t is 1 electron volt. So, k b t is nothing but 2 by 3 electron volt. So, we get n 3 by n 1 is 9 times e to the So, if we carry out this, we get n 3 by n 1, the, the value of n 3 by n 1 is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay. So, this is again a very uh, simple problem, but it is bit uh, you need to carry out little bit. Now, the Next problem is based on uh, is taken from uh, uh, rotational partition function. The length of the bond in oxygen molecule is 1.207 angstrom determine determine the rotational temperature determine rotational temperature and the rotational partition function for oxygen at 300 Kelvin temperature. It is given molar mass of oxygen oxygen molecule or oxygen is 32 gram. So, it is pretty straightforward. It says the length of the bond in oxygen molecule is 1.207 angstrom. Determine the rotational temperature and the rotational partition function for oxygen at 300 Kelvin and the information provided is like molar mass of oxygen is 32 gram. So, you need to first know because in while discussing rotational uh, partition function we considered symmetry number. So, symmetry we need to symmetry number we need to consider here. So, oxygen molecule is a homogeneous diatomic molecule. So, the symmetry number is 2 for oxygen molecule for oxygen molecule this is very important for oxygen molecule the symmetry number is 2 because this is homogeneous diatomic molecule. Next, what we need to do? We need to calculate rotational <coughs> temperature. So, so, rotational temperature theta is 
theta is h to the 2 by 8 pi square i k v. So, value of h k v these are known we need to calculate i moment of inertia of oxygen molecule. So, i is mu r square. So, m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2 r square and here m 1 equals to m 2. So, we can write m r square and then we have half term here because m 1 is equal to m 2 equals to m for oxygen molecule. So, I is half and mass of oxygen molecule is 32 and here m is mass of a single atom. So, 16 we need to consider 16 times 10 to the minus 3 this in kg by Avogadro number 6.023 times 10 to the 23 this is m and this is r is 1.207 times 10 to the minus 10 kg meter to the 2. Okay. So, if we calculate this we get the value of moment of inertia is 1.2. 937 times 10 to the minus 46 kg meter to the 2. So, this is the value of moment of inertia. Now, we can calculate rotational temperature. So, rotational temperature theta, theta is h to the 2 by 8 pi square i k b. So, theta is 6.627 times 10 to the minus 34 by 8 times 3.14 to the 2 times i, i is 1.937 times 10 to the minus 46 times k b is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. This is in Kelvin. So, if we carry out we get theta is 2.08 Kelvin. So, this is the value of rotational temperature and rotational partition function Q rotational is T by sigma times theta rotational. So, Q rotational is temperature is 300 Kelvin and sigma is 2 and theta is 2.08. So, you get 300 K, Q rotational is, so you get Q rotational is 72. Okay, so, this is the value of rotational partition function. Next, we discuss one problem based on uh, vibrational partition function. Consider the molecule into for which theta vibrational is 3397 Kelvin, a spectroscopic measurement measurement of the population populations of n equals to 0 states shows p n equals to 0 point. So, here p n is the probability of n state is 0 0.75. So, p n is the probability.
of n state or p n is the maybe you can write it in different manner. So, p n is the higher p n is the fraction of molecules in energy level n. So, here p naught is we say p naught not p n we said p naught is 0 0.75. So, what is the temperature of the gas? So, this problem states consider the molecule N 2 for which the theta by value of theta by follow for which the value of theta vibration is 3397 Kelvin. A, a spectroscopic measurement of the populations of N equals to 0 states shows 0 levels you consider here shows P naught equals to 0 0.75 where P naught P n is the fraction of molecule in the energy level n, what is the temperature of the gas? Okay, so, from uh, we know vibrational partition function, we know the value of, we know the expression, how do you solve it? So, hint here is you know what is the expression for P n, okay, from vibrational partition function. So, once you get P n with the value you substitute then value of P n is 0 0.75. So, you have some expression here once you substitute this you calculate the value of temperature. So, this is this is a very simple problem. So, you can always carry out. So, I am just skipping that one. So, next problem is this is very interesting problem a three dimensional harmonic oscillator has energy levels where n 1, n 2, n 3 can be 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. Calculate the ratio of the population of energy levels having energies seven h nu by two and nine h nu by two at T Kelvin temperature. Prove that when H nu equals to 1.2 times KBT, the population of 9 H nu by 2 level will be 
half of that 7 h nu by 2 level. So, this problem says a, a 3 dimensional harmonic oscillator has energy levels epsilon is n 1 n 2 n 3 equals to h nu times n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 plus 3 by 2 where n 1 n 2 n 3 can be 0 1 2 3 etcetera. Calculate the ratio of population of energy levels having energy 9 h nu by 2 and 7 h nu by 2 at T Kelvin temperature and we need to further prove that when n h nu equals to 1.2 kVT the population of n i n h nu by 2 level will be half of that of uh, 7 h nu by 2 level. So, how to solve this problem next ok. So, it is given the energy of a 3 dimensional harmonic oscillator is h nu times n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 plus 3 by 2. Now, when epsilon value of epsilon is uh, when epsilon is 9 uh, first we consider 7 h nu by 2. So, 7 h nu by 2. So, for epsilon uh, 7 h nu by 2 the degeneracy we need to calculate. So, the degeneracy is suppose g is 7 h nu by 2 we consider. So, consider here consider for epsilon equals to 7 h nu by 2 the degeneracy is g 7 h nu by 2 and for epsilon is 9 h nu by 2 the degeneracy is g 9 h nu by 2. So, how to calculate degeneracy next thing is. So, when epsilon equals to 7 h nu by 2, so we can write 7 h nu by 2 is h nu times n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 plus 3 by 2. So, it gives us n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 is 2. So, we can have n 1 equals to 2, n 2 equals to 0, n 3 equals to 0. This is one possibility. Second possibility is n 1 equals to 1, n 2 equals to 1, n 3 equals to 0. Third possibility is n 1 equals to 1, n 2 equals to 0, n 3 equals to 1. Fourth possibility is n 1 equals to 0, n 2 equals to 2, n 3 equals to 0. Then a fifth possibility is n 1 equals to 0, n 2 equals to 1, n 3 equals to 1 and the last possibility is n 1 equals to 0, n 2 equals to 0 and n 3 equals to 2. So, 6 different possibilities are there. So, the degeneracy, so to 6. So, so we, we have got the degeneracy of energy level having energies 7 h nu by 2. Next, we calculate for epsilon equals to 9 h nu by 2. We will do the similar, we will we will, we will perform similar exercise here also. So, we can write like before is So, this gives us n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 equals to 3. So, how many possibilities we will have? So, we have we can have n 1 equals to 3, n 2 equals to 0, n 3 equals to 0. This is one possibility. Second possibility is n 2 equals to 
2 into 1 n 3 0 and then we have n 1 equals to 1 n 2 equals to 2 n 3 equals to 0 and then we will have n 1 equals to 2 n 2 0 n 3 1 then n 1 1 n 2 0 n 3 2 then we have n 1 0 n 2 3 n 3 0 then n 1 0 n 2 2 n 3 1 n 1 0 n 2 1 n 3 2 and then we have n 1 0 n 2 0 n 3 3 and then we have another one is n 1 1 n 2 1 n 3 1. So, we have 3 6 10 10 possibilities. So, we get g 9 h nu by 2 is 10. Okay, so, population of energy level having energy, so suppose in suppose the population of of energy level having energy seven H nu by two is N seven H nu by two and the population of energy level having energy 9 h nu by 2 is n 9 h nu by 2. So, we can write n 7 h nu by 2 by n 9 h nu by 2 that is what we need to calculate n 9 h nu by 2 is g 7 h nu by 2 by g 9 h nu by 2 e to the minus beta 7 h nu by 2 minus 9 h nu by 2. So, write n 7 h nu by 2 by 9 n 9 h nu by 2 is 6 by 10 e to the beta h nu. So, you get n 7 h nu by 2 by n 9 h nu by 2 is 3 by 5 e to the h nu by k b t. So, this is the ratio of population of epsilon equals to 7 h nu by 2 and epsilon is 9 h nu by 2 energy levels. Now, the next part when when h nu is 1.2 times k b t 
we get n 7 h nu by 2 by n 9 h nu by 2 is 3 by 5 e to the 1.2. So, this gives us n 7 h nu by 2 by n 9 h nu by 2. And the value of this one, if we, if we, if we carry out, we get okay. So, we get this value is if we further carry out this. Okay, so, this is the second part. So, it says that the population of energy level having energy nine h nu by two is half of that for energy 7 h nu by 2. Thank you.